New season means new seasonal recipes, and now it's easier than ever. With fresh ingredients delivered to your door, HelloFresh brings the farmer's market to you. Get 16 free meals plus three gifts with code FACE16 at HelloFresh.com slash FACE16. If Maverick from Top Gun, let's say Tom Cruise, right? Say if Maverick from Top Gun walked by a school and saw kids playing Duck, Duck, Goose, would that be traumatizing for him? Yes, yes, yeah. It'd be horrific, <laughs> he would right? Have, he would have, like, World War One PTSD where he'd, yeah, he'd get tremors and shit. I guess they call it Grey Duck in Minnesota or something, and so it's in a call. They don't call it Duck, Duck, Goose in Minnesota. It's like Duck, Duck, Grey Duck or something. Um, what the fuck? And th- so I heard the word goose said like 15 times in this conversation, and it just my brain randomly went to imagine if I was Maverick and how traumatizing <laughs> this conversation would be for me right now. Just this quietly, I'm deeply disturbed thinking about my best friend's death when they're talking about a kid's game. What's that dude's name? Anthony Adams played uh, uh, Edwards, I believe. Anthony Edwards, maybe. Yeah, I think so. I He's on ER, right? After that or before? Yeah, yeah. he was on. Uh, we had a conversation about this yesterday. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Me and Jeff, we talked about this yesterday. Why? We didn't talk about Goose. We talked, we talked about, about the, right, those two t- actors and getting their names confused. Right. <laughs> so and he was he was also on Northern Exposure. So you uh, made almost the same mistake. I made the same mistake, but in reverse today. <laughs> I was talking about Anthony Adams yesterday and called him Anthony Edwards, and today I was talking Who's about Anthony, Anthony Adams? Adams. I don't think I know huh? who Anthony you're, Adams. Is. You're thinking now. Ugh. Anthony Anderson. Is Anthony Anderson is who I was thinking of. Yeah, who's Anthony Adams? I don't. <laughs> Wait, can I, t- can I Anthony, admit something to you? Wait guys? a second. You you got Anthony Adams doesn't exist. No, Anthony Adams is a former football player. Okay. What about Jesselnick? Anthony Jesselnick. <laughs> Anthony Jesselnick. Are we, are we naming Anthony's? I don't know, dude. It's all confusing. Uh, I was conflating Anthony Adams and Anthony Anderson while I was uh, confusing that person with Anthony Edwards. Uh, can I make an ad- an admission to you guys that is uh, for a child born in the '70s who grew up in the '80s is kind of uh, it's kind of it's been a, a cross to bear my whole life. Yeah, what I fucking hate the movie Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> I never liked it. I never I, I saw it like on my friend's birthday. We went to it at a, you know when it opened up, and I was just like, this sucks. I don't why, why do people like? I thought Tom Cruise was such a prick the entire film. I liked Goose, and then he died, and then the movie was over for me. I never got it. <laughs> it's, I mean, Goose is definitely the heart of that movie. I think that movie sucks. Really? Thank you. Yeah. I think it's dog you think shit. it sucks? Yeah, dog it's shit. shit. It's not worth watching twice, that's for sure. Yeah. Why does my computer say it's snowing? I don't know. It says snowing now. Oh, it thinks I'm in uh, Wixom, Michigan. What? Ah, great. Have you been in Wixom, <laughs> Michigan lately? <laughs> I don't think so. Did I never set like, whoops. Oh, I was going to. I was going to ask you guys to do something for me. This and it should not be hard. It's I pretty much par for the course. But could you guys do your best not to make me laugh for the next hour? Oh, because of the pain. So just, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. How did it go? Uh, well, uh, you know, <laughs> I wanted to start off 2022 like I started off 2021 <laughs> with root canals <laughs> with your mouth open. <laughs> yeah, with my mouth open with some old guy crawled up in it. Uh, I, yeah, I got part one of my root canal today on the first, you remember that first root canal I had way back a year and mm-hmm. a half ago that yeah. uh, took five sessions? Well, yes. that pesky little guy, uh, guy got, somehow got infected again. And so, uh, I'm on it's session s- six now on this tooth, can you uh, get your money back for the first five? <laughs> no, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> huh. I don't think there's a, dentists don't have satisfaction guaranteed, uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's like an NFL contract. They said they, they'll do their absolute best to eliminate the problem, but it can come back. And it did. So, you know, it's cool. I got a root canal today, and then uh, I'll get another one next week, and then I'll be done. Is, until it, the, is it a seven and done, or is it Oh, it's, the, the, it's either, it's either uh, he fixes it Wednesday, or we pull, or we pull the tooth. <laughs> so it, it's done one way or the other, yeah. I would have been on pull the tooth after, like, four, I think. I don't yeah, think I would go I, seven and pull. The problem is, I like the teeth that I have, you know? <laughs> and I'm also, I've also invested a lot of money in this tooth specifically. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, it's, it's a sunken cost fallacy, I guess, but I just, I really, 
I really feel like keeping the tooth around to get get my money's worth out of it. It's uh, this weird, almost like investing in a car that you just need to let go of. Like you yeah. put so much money into it. But seven is your walk away. Seven's a lucky number, Jeff. Yeah. Lucky number seven. That'll be it. <laughs> that'll be the turnaround for you. Just need seven and then you're, yeah, you'll be yeah. fine. Are you at more root canals on that tooth than Transformer movies? I think <laughs> oh, we're tied. Definitely. <laughs> okay. I think once you go past Fast and Furious movies, that's when you pull the tooth. Yeah. Like right now, I, I'm still in the King Arthur's court. Uh, level of <laughs> Transformers, I think. But if <laughs> if I get to Jason Statham uh, getting into a fist fight while holding a baby on an airplane, then I'll know it's time to pull the two. <laughs> it's the best part of that movie by a lot. I know that's true. It's definitely it's the best easily part. the best best sequence. Are we counting Hobbs and Shaw in the yes? Fast it's, yeah, okay, so you got you got a few to go still before yeah. you cross that line. Imagine if we were to count movies in which Jason Statham drives cars and that's his thing. And oh you got a God. Whole other Get the transporter. Is this pleasantries series. or is this the episode? Oh, I think we've been in the episode no, for a while. No, we did an intro. Did we not? No, I no, but I can intro. do one right now. Uh, hello and welcome to the uh, March 16th edition of the F*** Face podcast. I say that because when I came in for pleasantries, Eric said this is this episode will air March 16th, but nobody said what number it is. So I don't know. I know 94. we're in season four. What number? 94? It's 94. Episode, 94. episode 94 of season four, year... <laughs> two still are we still in year two uh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah 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 so we're still in year year two season four episode 94 of the mm-hmm. face podcast uh for reference it was recorded on february 17th 2022 <laughs> for airing on march 16th 2022 i have no idea why i uh, included all that especially considering how much it hurts to talk eric asks what did andrew think the intro was i just couldn't remember if it happened or not like we we switched so many topics, we moved it to the tooth. I saw the message Eric men- messaged like at the beginning, do the intro, and then I just couldn't remember if that actually happened. I I just had no memory, I had no no recollection of it. But we did it now, definitively. And while we're talking about bad movies, I feel like I should bring up a certain movie that I finally MVP. No, that's a great oh, film. Matrix. Matrix. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, <laughs> no I watched fun. the I watched the most recent Matrix movie, which has been a point of contention. Uh, What's it called? Even, Resurrection? I think so. I think it's okay. The Matrix Resurrections? Resurrection? Something like that. But I, I hadn't seen it, and I largely had been avoiding seeing it, because after Gavin watched it, he asked if, I, if I'd seen it, I said no, and he said, well, if you like that movie, we would cease to be friends, and I would stop doing this show. That is how much I hate it. I don't think I've ever <laughs> heard it Gavin... More extreme every time you No, say it. <laughs> it was... It was... That's been the bar. You, you've hated... I've never heard you hate anything like you've hated that movie. Oh, I'm not denying that I hate that movie. I was just surprised at how many people I spoke to about it liked it. So I was like, oh, which one, which one will Andrew be? Well, because I, I texted you before you saw it asking if you had, and you said no, and I said, oh, it's interesting. It's very divisive. People seem to either absolutely love it or hate it, there doesn't really seem to be much a middle for most people. And then, like, two days later, you saw it, and you were, like, violently hated it. Like, the most aggressively hated anything. Oh, yeah, dog shit. (laughs) (laughs) So what were your thoughts? I think it might be, and uh, there's there's a big caveat with this. I think it's my favorite Matrix movie. Of all of them. (laughs) I can't tell you how happy I am to hear you say that. Gavin just dropped from our call. He's oh, gone. He left. He's back. Yes, All right, I couldn't figure out how long me, to leave for. Let me. Uh, was that enough? Yeah, that was good. That was, oh. I think, really well timed. Let me okay. just clarify a few things. I didn't love the first movie. I feel like I kind of missed out on that being like super cool. I just I saw it late, and uh, it was fine. I saw the two and three in theaters. Didn't like them at all. I just thought they were boring <laughs> as a kid. So I don't have a fandom for any of these movies. Okay. And. You're completely correct in saying that, like, this most recent Matrix movie is super stupid. It's really dumb. It's ridiculous. But I just didn't care. I, just I had don't fun like the with feel it. of it. It feels it feels super low budget. It's like the most expensive one ever. But it just feels it looks so cheap looking. I don't know why. It's just, there is definitely it's a visual aesthetic, and also I feel like that movie is designed to be a thing you hate more than anything I've ever seen. Like with a lot of the choices in it, as far as how meta it is, and uh, it's just yeah, I loved it. Loved it maybe is a strong <laughs> word. I really enjoyed it. I was like, wow, that wasn't bad at all. I feel bad that I, I like this. I huh. wish we could be aligned. I enjoyed it to the point where I was still thinking about it a few days later. I was like, you know what? That was wow. really, that was fine. Yeah, I was thinking about it too. 
<laughs> I gotta say it looks good. Yeah, it's like really dumb and there's a lot of cringy things in it, but the things that are cringy I feel like are by design. Mm. Like it's 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 like fan service and, type shit. Uh some of the fan service stuff as well as some of the dialogue choices. Mm. Like there's this really obnoxious like gamer guy that's like MILF alert and it's like super <laughs> fucking cringy, but it feels like that's what that character is. Like, like I just, don't like he's that just character. true to the man. Yeah. yeah, like that that unfortunately is a person that exists and they're in the movie and it's not enjoyable, but it's not like that they're accurately portraying that person. Do you, you hate like lines it? such as I still know Kung Fu? That wasn't as upsetting to me as the way like it's the way that you said it was like he fucking juggled and like <laughs> winked at the camera six times. And <laughs> it's just sort of is a passing moment. I was kind of disappointed by how not like it's on the nose, but I was expecting a whole other, other level. Or, or the, the Merovingian talking about Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg and stuff. I mean, that stuff just was like, whatever. They entered a weird... I mean, that's in the, the world, The right? beginning, the meta stuff of it is just strange where they go into that. It's like a video game and just the approach of like the start of that story is so self-referential. Yeah. Gavin, do you maybe hate the movie a little bit because you're old? I don't, a lot of people don't know this, uh, who haven't known you forever, but your first AIM name that we used to communicate with was MILF Alert. Do you feel persecuted? <laughs> Oh, I wished so much that that was true. <laughs> That's a great. That's a great so name. Much- I would love oh. to just see a chat log between, like a press conference where it's a chat log between Belf Alert and Delicious Boner. What a great, right? what a great combination. Have oh. I ever told you the story about me and Bernie's first wife and Delicious Boner? No. <laughs> no, it's a great combination of words. I was at work. Uh, the, what Andrew's referring to is my old AIM name. We used to all communicate through AIM, AOL Instant Messenger, a ton back in the day. That was like our preferred method of communicate. And uh, my my uh, my AIM name was Delicious Boner. <laughs> Just because I thought first that was name. It wasn't my first. <laughs> no. I had to get rid of one because it leaked out, and then too many community members were messaging me. And then I had one that was set sail for ass, which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> uh, and then eventually I landed on Delicious Boner. I think uh, my balls your your ass was my one. balls your ass was one. <laughs> yeah, I changed. I had to change name names a lot. They kept getting out. So anyway, Delicious Boner was my favorite. And uh, Bernie was in Virginia visiting his dad, and uh, uh-huh. he called me and he said, "Hey." I'm trying to teach my dad how to use Instant Messenger. Can I can I give you a call real fast? Can I, and I and I'm like, yeah, of course. And then I get a like, you know, message from Bernie Burns, and I go, hello. And then I hear his wife. Uh, <laughs> I hear it pop up, and I hear his wife at the time go, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized it was Bernie and his dad and their whole family around a computer looking at <laughs> get, looking at a message from Delicious Boner. <laughs> I think that was the longest lasting aim name you had. Yeah, I had it for a very long time. Uh, I forgot about some of those you mentioned, like My Balls Your Ass. <laughs> that one wasn't as long. I was, uh, I was Von Evil Satan for a while. Remember yeah. That too? We had to change aim names a lot back in the day. It was a whole thing. Uh, Von Evil Satan? I don't even remember why. It was a inside baseball rooster teeth joke. I don't, and I don't remember where it came from or why. No. I... Uh... I've been watching this MTV reality show from 2005, and it's been great mainly for the T-shirt choices of that mm-hmm. time period, as well as the prizes that these people are winning. And one of the prizes they won was the first smart shoe called Verb for Shoe. And it was like, <laughs> this is the first shoe that has the computer chip in it. It will inflate and deflate based off of your pressure. We will send you emails if it needs repair. Like, it was this insane thing. And I was like, I've never fucking heard of Verb for Shoe. Like, what happened? Almost all the prizes that were like wacky gadgets never actually existed, including Verb for Shoe. But in my research of it, it was invented by a guy named Ronald Demon. Which made me really laugh just reading like <laughs> Mr. Demon went like it's just such a great casual like fake sounding like if a demon was going to inhabit the earth like that'd be the shitty name they'd come up with like ah Ronald Demon. So it just failed or it like never was it like it they, they did probably. like series of pre-orders for it from like 2004 then 2008 and then I just haven't found a single trace of it actually being manufactured or existing in any way. Which is right, all time that Unifon pick up the reins. Ooh. Yeah maybe. It was He's like probably a on a with f- balloons. fucking beach in the Caribbean somewhere spending all that investment. <laughs> uh, hey, I don't, I don't want to talk today much, but uh, okay. I, I realized after saying that, I have three time-sensitive things that we have to go over because okay. the, we're already, it's already March 16th, for Christ's sake. Uh, 
so at some point today, I, I just before we end, I need to crowbar these things in. So anyway, continue. No crowbar, crowbar away. I feel like it's out. Why don't you? Just okay, start there is. Uh, I don't think it's happened yet, but it may have. But if it did, <laughs> then you saw it. But if it hasn't, you should check it out. Uh, we're testing out. I want to do. I've long wanted to do. Uh, <laughs> I've always wanted the lamest jobs in television. Like, I always wanted to be Todd Bridges, but not in different strokes. I wanted to be Todd Bridges on, like, World's Worst Disasters and, like, sure. <laughs> uh, America's Worst Criminals, where you just get to sit there and make one lame fucking joke that somebody else uh -huh. writes for you, and then you're like, can I have my $2,000, you know? Uh, <laughs> but I've also really wanted to be, uh, and, and I think we've talked about this before in the past, maybe not on camera, but I always really wanted to be one of those knife guys who's on at like three in the morning on local television doing like, it's like the, it's like the redneck version of QVC where it's just like <laughs> two old dudes with belt buckles and a, like a white lazy Susan. And they just throw like a Rambo knife on it. And then they talk about it for three minutes and it spins around and they sell it like, you know, and then they put on another knife and I'm like, it's a buck hunting knife. And then, uh, Oh yeah, there, there they are right there. I want to be the dude on the left. That's fucking <laughs> great. We'll put that in the episode. Uh, <laughs> doing a terrible job so far. Thank you. Uh, and so, uh, I have a bunch of like remnant merchandise for like the Jeff line. If you're not a, mm -hmm. uh, for, if you're just a regulation listener and you don't participate in the rest. Oh, hello, Henry. You don't participate in the rest of Rooster Teeth. Uh, I have a, like a clothing line uh, that's been around for a couple of years. And so I have a bunch of crap that didn't sell. And I thought like, let me sell it like QVC style, like live sale. It would be like a fun, like infomercial kind of thing. Uh, and so they, we set that up and it may have already happened, but if it hasn't already happened. I'm very excited to announce to you two, because I think this is very funny. They told me I had to come up with a name and then they gave me a list of potential names like Jeff's garage sale and Jeff's, uh, you know, spring cleaning. And, and I came up with everything must go, go now. That's good. <laughs> That's great. Is that the best name I've ever come up with in my entire life? Yeah. Everything uh, must go. Go now. Yeah. Holy shit! I wish I could sell the name. That is such a. I'm so fucking proud of myself. Well, now we know the the name of all future f face sales. Yeah. All sales now are going to be everything must go. Go now. I'm so. I'm just so tickled with me because of that name. We can I, put uh, that at the top of the uh, f face flops section of the website i love it i love it dude speaking of not flops that freaking porta potty mug oh yeah it's finally uh we're finally doing pretty well that thing went yo you know what very quietly uh i should i should mention i noticed in the checking on the sales on the on the porta potty mug which you guys supported in a big way and we cannot thank you enough and i hope that if you decide to piss or shit in it or drink in it or <laughs> no, store no. baseball cards in it like i've been doing uh, I hope that you enjoy it to the fullest of its capacity because it is a, 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 it's a fantastic piece of uh, merchandise that we will never make again. Uh, so thank you. If you got one, thank you so much for supporting us. In the process of that, though, they bought all the skateboards. Oh. Yeah. So we, now we've got no flops. Yeah, we got no, no flops. Oh, shit. I know. Flopless. <laughs> and which segues into num the number two thing. Uh, this is now, this joke's now over a month old, but uh, <laughs> we, in, in our time, the time that we're yeah. recording this, last week we recorded a face break shit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Gavin, you couldn't be there because of prior obligations. So uh, it was me and Eric and uh, Andrew and Emily, as always. Uh, and uh, we debuted some of, the, some of the sounds on the soundboard that was pretty exciting. Uh, Gavin's Oh No was on there. Uh, <laughs> but right before there, the reason we recorded it in the old location and not the new location is because I had to make a video for Achievement Hunter with Jack for the Super Bowl. And so they were like, well, let's just move our production over here to make it easier on Achievement Hunter and Jack, which we did. And then Jack was supposed to jump on, finally jump on the break show uh, right after that because uh, they two butted up against each other. And I turned around and that motherfucker was in his car driving away. <laughs> I what? couldn't believe it. He was Why even in the description for the break show. I looked the social, the, the, the fucking marketing team even advertised it <laughs> as Jack being in there. And the guy and the son of a bitch took off. He Matt Damon to me or like a reverse Matt Damon. Uh, and uh, and so I got so annoyed I took that photo of him that I have taped to the side of the bin that I bring the, the baseball cards in, <laughs> the one that he made. He made it of himself. It's like Jack with a big ass like Louis C.K. bald head because he was uh, he made it for a contest or something years ago. So I put it on a fucking shirt and we sold it. Mm -hmm. And I, I said we would sell it until he finds out about it. And then so all I did was post on Instagram an Instagram story on the face account. Just don't tell Jack, but if you have any interest in this, you can get it. If not, I don't give a fuck. Don't buy it. It's, I'm, not, I'm not trying to get you to buy it. I'm just telling you it's available, right? And uh, it managed to be up from Friday to Monday before he noticed. <laughs> and we sold hundreds of them. 
how how That's did he great. notice? How did he did he find out himself? Do you know how it was discovered? I don't know. I just got a te- I just got a text from him. And it's like it just said like somebody told me. And I was like, all right. So I took it down. But it was in I was even thinking I should create like well I don't I can't say it on the podcast cuz he'll hear it. Uh let me just say I'm not done. I, and I hope Jack pisses me off again because I have other I have other ideas. And I'm, I'm talking to you, regulation listeners, and I'm talking to you, comment leavers. I don't know how to get this information to you because he listens to this fucking podcast because he's a he's a big ass <laughs> fan. So uh, I'll find some other way to communicate with you because the next time he steps over the line, I've got I've got plans to put in place. It's going to be wonderful. <laughs> I just love the idea of stuff being on sale depending on how much you happen to like Jack that week. <laughs> yeah, that's so pretty what, much what it. What do you leave? Is it just this thing now that he just will never be on it? Uh, I don't know, dude. He's it's, I, I mean, I think he was dodging obligation and work. You know, he was like, "Wow, that's the that's what I'm paid to do from nine to five. So uh, uh, fuck them." Uh, anyway, that was the second thing. And then the third thing uh, is, Andrew, you sent me a troubling tweet the other day, and I'd like to, I'd like to know why. Oh, you, you want to talk you, about... Yeah, okay. you tweeted to me, and you said, only, I consider this a declaration of war. Well, I'll, I'll post it in. So I got... Jeff mailed me a thing uh, out of the kindness of his heart, apparently. I thought this was... I didn't know how to interpret it at first. I didn't know what was coming. It was in a giant bag. It was very Santa-like. The it doesn't look very... that big in the photo. Oh, it's huge. It's I fucking know. Uh, I know. massive. <laughs> it's like a sack. It is genuinely yeah. like a Santa sack-sized bag. And I was like, oh, Jeff is so Jeff is so sweet. He sent a thing. He sent a card. I don't have the photo of that, but it was like something. It was a, it was a nice little message. It yeah. was during when I was at the peak of like issues with uh, my, my ankle. Uh, and then... So I opened the sack, which took a long time. I didn't, I didn't tell you this. It took me genuinely like three minutes to undo the <laughs> ribbons on this fucking sack because it was like quadruple knotted on both sides. <laughs> and I'd pre- like loosen one side and then the other side would get tighter. And it was a nightmare. <laughs> it's precious so cargo. I finally, it is. So I finally I, I opened the sack and then I have this. I have this small <laughs> box in this giant fucking bag. And I'm like, what is this? Now it's a box. This is like, it's still kind of like exciting. What could it possibly be? So then I finally opened the box and you just sent me a giant fucking thing of bubble wrap to, I guess, protect my foot. Yes. To wrap see, my foot in. Here's Is the thing. The- <laughs> Let me explain. Let me explain. Not to wrap your foot, although you, you reserve the right to do that. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, you and Gavin, at the, at the same time, were both having problems in your lives. And I've, I've addressed both of them. Uh, Gavin, you don't know this yet. Uh, no, I, I, I've, Ga- I've got the package. Oh, you got the mail? Okay. I got, well, I got go. the mail. I, I stepped over on the way in today. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Gavin, you had a particular issue. God damn it, Henry. You had a particular <laughs> issue. And, uh, and Andrew, you had a particular issue. And I, I thought, like, let me put my uniform hat on and let me invent some ways to help you. And I'll be honest, I'm just a little down on ideas right now. I'm, I'm not feeling super creative. And I thought, I bet, I bet solutions exist. Let me be creative with those. So, Andrew, I worry about you falling a lot. You and my great-grandma... <laughs> I worry, well, she's dead, but my grandma, you and my grandma, I worry about falling constantly. And so for you, I bought you 125 feet of bubble wrap that you can bubble wrap every hard or sharp edge in your apartment. And then if there's enough left over, wrap it around your ankle or lay it on the floor. So when you fall, you fall into a cushion because it's kind of a given that you will fall again. I would. Sure. I'm just waiting for the time that you fall and impale your neck on a sharp corner or something. Jesus so I Christ. wanna. Uh, I know. Where you have to bike me to the hospital? Isn't that what happened? Uh, to your maybe. Friend? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I did. did I biked him home, and then his parents took him yeah. to the hospital. Uh, I. Uh, I want desperately to keep you safe, and so I want I to that. Andrew proof your, your apartment. Uh, I also sent you. It got returned, so I apologize for this. I can resend it if you'd like. I. I bought you like eight. Uh, like eight. K, uh, like spools <laughs> of I don't know what you call it of packing tape. So uh, I've got a shitload of packing tape, but I guess for some reason Amazon couldn't deliver your packing tape. You were stuttering there, like you couldn't get through that sentence. But Henry well, was also squeezing at the same yeah. point every time, so it sounded like a skipped record. I was searching for a word. Henry was distracting me, and the pain is intense <laughs> in my mouth. They didn't have the pain kit. They had my can, uh, antibiotics ready at the at the pharmacy, but not the pain meds. So oh. I haven't gotten them yet. Well, you can keep the tape. It's okay. That's very kind of you, though. Yeah, that way, uh, just so like, just just wrap everything in three layers of bubble tape or bubble wrap, and you're gonna be fine. Awesome. Shall I post a picture of what you sent me? I'd yeah, love I would to love see what he sent yeah. you. 
I don't even. What is that? Yeah, what is that? That's not all uh, I sent you either. No, he sent. He also sent me a cucumber, which was lovely. Um, <laughs> mostly, like a, mostly new, <laughs> only partially used. <laughs> <laughs> a cucumber with like the third of it missing or like maybe a quarter cut off um and this from what i can tell is a device that you put over the top of a doorknob with and it grips it to make it like a door handle yes <laughs> yes i got you and it's portable I, it's like it's like throw it in your pocket and then whenever you are out about <laughs> around town or in a different country and you encounter something as offensive to you as a doorknob, you can pull that puppy out, slap it on, and uh, and uh, all your fears and, and hatred and anger will melt away in the hands of a strong plastic or rubber, I guess rubber, strong rubberized uh, door handle. Yeah, it's amazing. I don't have any doorknobs to test it on um, as we... <laughs> Established and obviously they're illegal in Vancouver, so yeah, probably won't be using them there. But the, you, I'm going to keep one in my pocket. Yeah, you travel a lot. Yeah, that's such a great. I didn't know that was the thing. That was very kind. And you know what? No kindness should should go without return, Jeff. Uh, so I, I hope you know that I we can't, or at least I can't. I, I won't speak for Gavin. I can't wait to return the favor to you and make sure that you also just understand how much I appreciated the bubble wrap and. But, Do something but kind right one back. one could argue that you already uh, showed me that level of affection with a porta potty a year ago, and this is me making up uh, for that. So, so there's no uh, need. I, there's no need. There's no need. No, there's no I, need. I, this was this is a different year. It doesn't. It's a year thing. It changed years. So I think it's this is a different gift. I have to return the favor to you, <laughs> and uh, I you know it's, it's I appreciate your kindness, and I can assure you it will be equally matched. And I hope you enjoy uh, whatever that happens. Uh, you gotta make sure it's a good gift. Uh, thank you. Because it's not what you did. So thoughtful. Ooh, that could be a good one. Oh, we'll God. see. It has I'm to be sweet. It. It'll be a sweet, thoughtful thing that Jeff loves, and uh, I can't wait. Can't wait to, to return the kindness. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you really should. You don't have to. For no, I can't wait to do it's it. Just, it's gonna be great. I don't give gifts to, to get them. them. I, 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 it's, it's done out of just the like best the, part the of getting and gifts. Kindness Jeff of my is heart. being able to send someone else a gift in return. No, it's the no, giving. No, no, the, the giving no, is no. the joy. So the I best part of giving a gift is the give. giving. The best part for you is receiving. The receiving. No, of the, the gift. best part for me is returning. I, the kindness no, you're a receiver, in Andrew. And you're you're like a natural born receiver. You're one who receives. Uh, you one who collects, who who who, yes. Uh, it takes in it takes into your arms. Whereas I am, I'm one who pushes and shoves at you. Uh, I wish I I could remember who said this and, and give them the credit. Somebody reached out to me and they brought up that I am a stormer because I stormed out of my room when you bought all the shit at my birthday that I had to just keep <laughs> oh, going yeah. out. Oh yeah, when you so were like, there is <laughs> there is a documented storm of me on this show. So I guess I am a stormer. I have stormed. There you go. But you were st you weren't storming out. You were storming towards something. Yeah, I was storming in. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an aggressive storm, I guess. I go after. I'm not away. I pursue. I, I was uh, I was reading the comments on the one that just came out, and um, the audience pointed out something based on this part of the conversation. Does Randy Savage begin, or where does you know what I mean? And Macho yeah. Man end. Like, is there like how different is he at home on right now? In his living room, watching CNN. <laughs> or... Yeah, did you know he's been dead for over a decade or what? <laughs> I'll I'll say this: uh, <laughs> the producer of this show fucking knew. I guarantee you, and he could have <laughs> spoke up. Yeah, I I knew, and we talked about it, and I thought you were making a joke. I think if you were to listen to my audio, you say that, and then I probably go what and laugh, but it's not in the episode. Oh, and we've you got just to find that. Because it was you it's saying watching CNN right like at his house right now. Right now. It's like right now? <laughs> All I was I, I didn't know he was dead. I wasn't aware he was dead. Or if I, I knew he him. was dead, I forgot uh, about it. But I think the point of the uh, of the uh, the point I was trying to make still stands was uh, all right. Rest in peace, Randy Savage. I'm so sorry to hear you. Yeah. Miss Elizabeth and I uh, both, I'm sure, are crestfallen. Uh, uh, I think she's dead too. Are you fucking I'm serious? Sure she's I'm pretty yeah, sure she's yeah, Miss been Elizabeth dead way is longer. Dead. Yes. Oh my God. I think she died a, way longer than he did. What yeah. about the snake? Is the snake alive? So Jake the snake is still good. Jake the snake is alive. Damien the snake was not actually one snake. There were a bunch of different snakes and most are dead, yes. Oh, man. 
All right. Well, anyway, rest in peace, Macho Man Randy Savage. Who? I'm not going to ask it. There's so many other people. I want to know if they're dead now, but I guess they are. I guess if I can name a name that I remember from the 80s associated with wrestling, they're could dead. You, could you just name uh, one name for me, please, Jeff? Manny Fernandez, the Flying Burrito. Thank you. That's a thing. That's My favorite right wrestler when I was a kid growing up. Followed closely really? by Dusty Rhodes and yep. then by the Road Warriors. And then when they hooked up and it became the Legion of Doom, that uh-huh. was like, that would have been one of my first oh, boners. Shit, there's so many things. Yeah. I, I mean, like, I'm pretty sure Manny Fernandez is still alive. And he, I just, I remember him as the Raging Bull. Um, it, it like NWA or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, one half of the Road Warriors is dead. So, Who died, uh, Hawk or Animal? Uh, Hawk. Animal's still alive, I think. Oh, that's sad. It's, I, that's sad. Do wait, you think- did Animal, wait, maybe, maybe he did die not too long ago. Hawk was the smart one. Animal was the angrier one. Yeah. He was more rage. Oh, no. Yeah. In 2020, Animal died. So they're both dead. Hawk has been... Yeah, they're both dead. Fucking hell, dude. Yeah. Anyway, I still think the point still stands is that I was was trying to get to is, is was Randy Savage the macho man at home when he was kicking up his feet, drinking a beer and watching TV? Or was it a persona he put on? Right? Yeah. I just wonder no, where like the character valid. ends and begins. I, I apologize, I wasn't up on my on my dead celebrities, but uh, I'll just go ahead and say this: if if we talk about a wrestler, chances are they're dead. Yeah, that's fair, especially from that era. Yeah, the high probability for sure. Yeah, I don't think your point was wrong. I think your point is completely valid. It was just the phrasing was definitely odd for sure. I I think at the time I registered as I thought, well, he's dead, but it didn't, you know, like it didn't register enough. I understood what you were saying. I didn't feel the need to, to correct. Also, he's he's immortal as he lives on through his music. That is true. A lot of people didn't even bother making resolutions this year. And you know what? I get it. But it doesn't mean you shouldn't still find a way to shake things up. Whether it's by switching your workout routine or going someplace new, whatever way you challenge yourself this new year, there's no better way to do it than with a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds in your ears. Why your ears? Where else would you put them? Ears are where they go. And speaking of your ears, they're going to love them because the everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. Seriously, put other stuff in your ear and then put that in your ear and you'll go, oh, this one makes sense. There's also an awareness mode for when you need to listen to your surroundings, like when you're riding a bike, so you can take Raycons with you wherever you go and be safe. With optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, these earbuds are so comfortable and they will not budge. It's like getting an ear massage while you're treating yourself to some lovely music or a book on tape or angry political talk. Raycons offer eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life, and they're priced just right. You get quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. It's no wonder that Raycon's everyday earbuds have over 48,000 five-star reviews. That's out of five, too. That's not five stars out of 10 or 20 or 30 or 40. That's five out of five. Right now, face listeners can get a 15% discount off the Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash face. That's buyraycon.com slash face to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash face. The time for spring cleaning is upon us. You clean out your garage, your pantry, your bedroom closets, but do more than just dust cabinets and organize. Clean your butthole too with Hello Tushy Bidets. It's been a long winter up there. We need to freshen it up. So after wiping with dry and scratchy toilet paper for the last God knows how long our bums could use a serious refresh. Put your cleanest booty forward and start washing with Hello Tushy. Imagine that you're walking down the street. That's what I sound like when I walk down the street. You might sound like this. Or maybe you sound like this. I don't know. Everybody walks different. But imagine that you're doing that. And a bird poops all over your arm. Are you just going to pat it off with a dry napkin? I hope not. You're going to stick it in a toilet and wash it with a bidet because you need to clean with water. And why are we treating our buttholes differently? Stop smearing your business around with toilet paper like it's some sort of a kid's finger painting and start washing with water. Use the Hello Tushy bidet. It's 2022, people. Get technological. Get cleaner. Stop spreading your business around your butthole with toilet paper and start eliminating it with Hello Tushy Bidets and water. I want all of our listeners to have clean buttholes, so visit hellotushy.com slash face 
to get 10% off plus free shipping right now. While you're at it, go ahead and tag us and at Hello Tushy on social media so we can celebrate your clean butthole with you. That's hellotushy.com slash face for 10% off. Can I can I pivot to something for a minute? Please, I had please, please. I had quite the uh quite the story. We're gonna go on a journey. We're gonna start, it's gonna seem <laughs> we're gonna get to a weird place, but it's needed for the context because I think it adds to the story. So, like last week. One year, it was the, the one year since my grandma had passed. And so I was like spending time with my mom for dinner. It was her mom, my grandma, very close. And we're having this like emotional dinner. We lit a candle. We're talking about things. And uh, then the conversation kind of pivoted. And she, my mom loves like watching shows and whatnot. She is a very, like she doesn't curse. She grew up super religious, like a Martha Stewart type person. Um, so we're talking. She's like, yeah, I've been watching uh, this thing on Netflix or I don't remember what it was on. I think BJ Novak is in it. And uh, uh, it was the, the, the guy that was on Lost and Hawaii Five-0. And I was like, Locke? And she's like, no. And so Hurley? No. And it's like, Jin? Yeah, Daniel Day Kim. That's who it was. Yeah. Daniel Day Kim and BJ, BJ Novak have their show. Uh, are butt plugs real? <laughs> that was the pivot. That was the pivot. That is how it went. I was stunned. <laughs> Just immediate into our butt plugs real. And the candle was still plugs? lit, like in remembrance. The candle, <laughs> the candle was still lit in remembrance. And she, my mom doesn't curse. She's like very, like not at all, like very conservative. She's a very liberal in her beliefs, but a very conservative social person. Are butt plugs real? Have you heard of a butt plug? And I'm just, I'm fucking stunned that this has just happened. So then I'm like, yeah, but butt plugs are, yeah, they're real. Butt plugs are real. And she's like, oh, okay, yeah. They, she explained that I guess the plot of the episode of the show involved butt plugs, and she had never heard of a butt plug, and she thought that they were a fictional creation for that show. She didn't wow. know that they were real. So and then she had to turn to her son for clarification. She had to turn to me on the anniversary of her mom's passing, <laughs> right after we had this very serious talk. So then, so then time passes a little bit. And then she says to me, should I Google it or should you just tell me? <laughs> and I said, what are you talking about? And she said, well, like, why do people, why would you have a butt plug? Should I Google it or are you going to tell me? <laughs> oh. And I said, I can tell you, but you didn't ask like what they did or what they were, but you asked, are they real? And I, I know they you, exist. She's clearly wanted to know when she, when she asked if they were real, why didn't you just fill her in on... No, because listen, it's the context of when it happened and everything. Like, I'm stunned. It's just an insane. This is like, I've never had a conversation like this <laughs> with my mom. And we're going deep on butt plugs. And so then I explain going to her, deep. well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I say like, well, I don't necessarily, I haven't really looked at butt plugs in depth, but I think from my understanding, some people find pleasure in them. And then there might be like, a, a way to like practice or train towards anal sex. I don't really know necessarily, but I believe those are like the leading reasons why you may want a butt plug or wear, wear a butt plug. So then I'm just imagining her at your wedding one day and she's just like, what about dildos? <laughs> so then I explain that. And there's a pause and like I can see her processing. And then she says, what's more known, a butt plug or a brony out of fucking left field? Because she had just learned oh my she Lord. just learned that bronies exist like two days prior. Uh, and I really struggled to answer that question. Oh, what definitely is, butt plug. But I would assume. Sure. Oh, I feel for like thousands of years. Bro Bronyism was a fad. Yeah. Like a decade ago. Flash in the pan. Really? I was more, I didn't know, because I feel like it was so big, but maybe it's just because I knew people that were super into it, so my perception of how popular My Little Pony and bronies were. I'll say this, skewed. are you, are those people still uh, bronies? Are they still way into it? No, absolutely Well, not. I tell you what, once a butt plug fan, probably always <laughs> a butt plug fan. I don't think you age out of those. <laughs> so we go through that, and then my mom was just like, oh, things are so sexualized nowadays or something like that. And I was like, well, I think butt plugs have probably been around like an insanely long amount of time if I looked into it. So I searched it and the first butt plug was made in like 1897 and they were called anal dilators. 
<laughs> and the guy that sold them were like, this will cure everything. You got night blindness, you need higher IQ, shove one up. You'll be good. You got this. You're going to be fine. <laughs> and he did that unchecked for like 30 years until like the FDA looked at how he was marketing them. and was like, you cannot do this. This is illegal. You have to stop selling these. Yeah, but people have been surely shoving shit up their ass for centuries. Can you imagine the, the conversation? You're like, how did so you meet somebody and you're like, how'd your, so you're well off. How'd your family get your fortune? Uh, I, I really don't want to tell you, <laughs> but it had to do with my great grandfather. <laughs> had to do with night blindness. <laughs> he was a doctor of sorts. <laughs> so this is, there's another plug. I'm just like. I'm stunned. I'm lost that like we are we are like knee deep in ass plug talk on this anniversary. <laughs> you keep your your re, your euphemisms, man. You're knee deep in ass talk. <laughs> you gotta stop. So oh, God damn. She pause like there's another pause you, and then she yeah. looks at me and she says, "Wow, <laughs> at least I have something to talk about with my friend at lunch tomorrow. I wonder if they've heard of butt plugs." And it's like she's going out for like a coffee with like her other sixty year old friend. Do you and think she's just, one of the oldest people to discover the butt plug alive today? Yeah. yeah. Or, or was Probably. she like breaking news to all of her friends? And they were I like, what, what now? I don't. I, that would be a great thing to discover. Has to Can be I request uh, some information? Absolutely. At a future date. Can you check back in with your mom and find out if her friends knew what butt plugs oh, were? And no, if she's like the wrong. last one to the table? Just hey, let me finish. Oh, okay. I'm going to okay. get there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize. What a so we're still going. Are we, are we close to reaching the climax? Of we're this? getting there. So she pulls out her phone after this. After like I explain, because I like showed her what the original butt plugs look like. Uh, <laughs> and then so she pulls out her phone to like clearly search them, and she whispers like she's even like embarrassed to say it out loud. She's like, "Is is butt plug spelled with one T or two? Like she didn't know if it was butt plug or, or literal butt plug. <laughs> so I had to clarify that. And then I was just like, don't fuck, you know, don't search. I'll pull it up. Like, it's going to be a fucking disaster I've already got a bookmarked. if you search for this. <laughs> so I pull it up and I show a photo of it. And she looked at it and she's immediately like $15. Those are low quality. It's a three pack. Like what? This is a bullshit. Like she's immediately <laughs> critiquing the quality of it and deem them to be like shitty and that there better be. She was like, I, are there titanium ones? Like what are the high end for butt plugs? <laughs> And he's so like then, a chromium butt. Your mom, so your mom yeah. thought those were shitty butt plugs. Got it. She thought they were pieces of shit that were cheap, and she likes fancy, extravagant things. So she's like, "What's the high end of this? Or do they come in titanium?" So now I'm on like just a sex, like a random sex store site, pulling up butt plugs. I find the most expensive one is like hundred sixty dollars. Was it like a and Chanel collaboration or something? It, <laughs> Gucci. It was a Gucci butt plug. Gucci. Chanel X anal. <laughs> <laughs> It was remote operated and she just she wasn't impressed because it was a titanium. She's like, get up, fuck out of here. I don't care. It's not titanium. So then I showed her one that made it look like you had a tail and she was done. That was it. We were done. She had no that killed That's it. Too much. That was a bridge too far. You're not allowed to have a tail. So that oh, was we found the, the limits of your mom. Yeah. Yeah. We've we hit the peak of it. So I talked to her today and I, I asked, like, I asked jokingly. <laughs> Because <laughs> she had had, she's been to like four different lunches or whatever since we've had this talk. Damn. Uh, so I asked her, I asked, like, just as I said, as a joke, so did you talk to your friends if they knew what butt plugs were? And she said, like, completely seriously, yes, I'm doing a survey. And then she went through her list. She is asked every time she is like interacting with a friend that she hasn't interacted with about the subject. She is bringing up the subject of butt plugs versus bronies specifically. <laughs> she is surveying how Jesus many of her friends Christ. in the six year old demographic know either or of these things. So she's asked two people so far. Both of them knew what butt plugs were. Didn't know what bronies were. I don't think so, you're adopted. So the <laughs> I love that your mom thinks you're an anal expert. I, was, I, was just, I think she was shocked that I knew. I think she was expecting me to say no. She really thought they were a fictional thing created for... She, she was like, allow me to spill the tea on butt plugs. <laughs> so is this like an annual thing? Like every year when the candle gets lit, do you think it will be a different topic of conversation? I don't. I, I'm terrified of what it could possibly be next year. But it was just... <laughs> 
the the absurdity of the conversation that it kept going further and and the the questions and the sub it was just it was wild yeah i was stunned i'm still stunned i'm still processing <laughs> it but I'll, I'll keep you guys updated as this survey gets filled up further so far dude zero bronies what's the demographic just middle-aged oh, canadian 60, women 60 year old canadian women yeah okay yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, dude! So well, excited. I'll say this, Gavin. I know what we're getting to Andrew for Christmas and for his birthday <laughs> and for Christmas and his birthday until he dies. <laughs> <laughs> How, what, what temperature does titanium melt at? I have no head. idea. Why so, are you even asking? I'm gonna try and whip something up. <laughs> 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 titanium melting temp. <laughs> you <don't laughs> Do you want it in Fahrenheit or Celsius? Celsius, please. 1668. Oh, that's doable. A little foundry, a little bit of a propane for uh, blast. For, for normal humans, that's 3034 Fahrenheit. Normal? What? What? Why? I don't, I don't understand what that was. What? What just happened? Temperature talk? We are arguing well, about temperatures? <sighs> Somehow you guys are more baffled going back and forth with that than me hearing my fucking mom talk about butt plugs out of nowhere. No, I just uh, Americans always think that it's like, oh, you gotta you gotta convert it for Europeans oh, or I something. See. It's yeah, like yeah, yeah. the no, world used is Celsius. I was just insulting Gavin because he's not yeah. American. Understood. Yeah. yeah. Even though he's desperate to be. Yeah. Do uh <laughs> where do you live? <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> Wait, not, not only do you live in America, dickhead, you live in the most American state in America. You live in fucking Texas. Dude, America's great. I came home to a cucumber today. <laughs> is that so? Is that edible? How edible is that? Is that a junk cucumber or am I going to have I, it? I gave, I gave it to Millie yesterday in her lunch. <laughs> okay. It's totally you, gave her a whole, you gave her a whole cucumber? No, I gave her the third that I cut off, <laughs> oh, idiot. Okay. The part that's, that's, the part that's that. peeled off and chopped off. I thought you were saying that you gave the whole thing to her and this is what she left. No, no. It was uh, like, it was the, it's a dole out a little bit every day. Uh, gave her tomatoes you today because uh, I, I gave you the cucumber. Do you have anything you want to specifically bring up, Gavin, or should I go into no, Jingle I, well, Jingle Jingle finally? You can go to Jingle Jingle Jingle. When I, when I was you trying to? to find that Randy Savage clip, I also found this. This isn't related to uh, face, but this is what we were talking oh. about. <laughs> last time <laughs> when Andrew was confused about the full English breakfast. Oh, yeah. Uh, to be sausage. fair, I feel like the way you described it was very confusing. You said, what's the black thing? I said, it's black pudding. It's like fried blood. Yeah. Just fried. I didn't have any concept of what fried blood was. Blood sausage. Do you like it? Do I like it? No. Yeah. No, I, don't, I hate it. Is it popular? Do most people like it? I, I mean, if you order full English, it's a part of it, usually. I've ordered a lot of full English and I've never gotten it. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's probably the first thing to go. It's the first sort of polarizing item. Yeah, they probably don't even bother, like, in the tourist areas. It's probably hard to get here. Well, I mean, blood sausage, you, you get that in the stores, don't you? It's pretty much what it is. Mm, no. That's what no, the confusion that's, that's was. Disgusting. I didn't know the prep of making, in my head, I didn't know <laughs> what the process was. Like, in the same way Canada has bagged milk, you're like, yeah, get a bag of blood. Go grab some bu blood, get some cow well, you were blood, saying throw it I was misrepresenting it. I was like, yeah, it's, it's like fried blood. And you were like, you've misled me. It's fried, it's fried blood and fat. Well, I wasn't aware of what a blood... I asked what a... I don't know what a blood sausage is. So I asked, is it part of the blood sausage? Is that what a blood sausage is? Is it the <laughs> blood from the blood sausage? And we just moved on. <laughs> moved on. Just completely stepped over that. Eric wants us to talk about Jingle, Jingle, Jingle. Should we right. talk about... Yeah, yeah, hold on a second. Would you eat blood... Uh, black pudding or whatever the fuck it's called, Andrew? Oh, absolutely not. I mean, we, it took a step further where I would be willing to try different types of blood. He thinks was, every animal's <laughs> blood would taste the same. I was if curious it, if it would. There's no way. If, if every meat tastes different, then surely the blood would be a different flavor. I don't think it would be that wide of a, a range uh, of flavors. I, I, if you, ooh, I, I black know. pudding could be uh, usually pork or beef, I think. I bet it's I different. don't think if you were, if you, let's say, uh, this is a ridiculous conversation. If you got super into drinking cow's blood, just as a side, <laughs> it was your beverage of choice for a while. If we laid out a bunch of different bloods on a table, I don't think you'd be able to distinguish which one is cow. Should we do a blind bloodshot test? <laughs> I think you guys should. I think it's gross as fuck. I also think, Andrew, you've got the perfect thing to bring up with your mom next year when you have your <laughs> memorial. <laughs> oh. uh, okay, so Jingle, 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 Jingle was, uh, it's a uniform, it's sort of a uniform 
So Unifarm Creation, Jeff, in some ways. Okay. We're, okay. It, was, it was a discussion of uh, the wrist pocket, which will, I think, either have gone on sale or will be coming on sa- sale soon. Hopefully it's already this? on sale, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I haven't actually done the, the shitty part yet, but it's due tomorrow, so I think I'll be doing it most of tonight. Um, And so we're talking about, I don't, I don't remember how, it was like scenarios in which you would use a beef bracelet. Is that it? Is that the conversation of it? We're talking about clothing items and the way that in the, in a scenario in which you're in an orgy, the beef bracelet would be the field choice, I think, of anything else. Like you would need to it would be wearable. You can maintain energy. You can get a snack. You don't need to leave the pile. It would be the number <laughs> one. It would be the number one thing. You just stick around. You don't have to leave at that point with the beef bracelet. As long as you're not into fisting. That's a that quick way be, to lose a beef bracelet. That's true. You got to be on your non-dominant <laughs> hand. Yeah. <laughs> like the episode of Mr. Bean where he loses his watch in the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're talking about like how every other item is inferior to the beef bracelet in the orgy scenario. And that imagine some guy in the orgy with a fucking fanny pack on with a bunch of keys in it, just jingling all, all over the place. It's jingle, jingle, jingle. It's jingling all over. So that is that was the, the yeah, origin we deemed, of we deemed the fanny pack the worst thing to wear in an orgy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it was. It was by far. Because it's just imagining like a janitor in a movie with like that many keys, but that guy in an orgy with a fanny pack, just the jingle. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just like that and grunting. Yeah. So when we were talking about Unifarm and the value of the beef, beef bracelet, I think we really missed the orgy market in that demographic. <laughs> I think we really could have angled better to them. I think that would be... I'm trying to think. There are other products, right, where like they made it and then it got adopted in a way that they didn't at all intend. Yeah, that's where all, always. Was. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah, happens all the time. I think that's maybe where the beef bracelet would go. I think it would <laughs> maybe be I mean, a huge hit. Like Wrigley's Gum started out as a soap company. And really? now they make gum. Yeah, they would include like it was like during the Great Depression or around that time. And so they had to like they were coming up with like incentives uh, like we would give away a free air freshener with a shirt, maybe uh, in the, in the okay. cafe store. Uh, but they would give away like a free piece of gum when you would buy soap huh. to convince people to buy it. And then the soap, the gum became so popular. They just said, fuck the soap and uh, went all in on gum. <laughs> wow. Just to clarify, what Nick said, did you say leave the pile? I absolutely did. Yeah, of course. I assume it's just a pile. I su- I've never been in an orgy. I haven't, I haven't even seen Eyes Wide Shut, which I feel like would probably be... Didn't you get invited to an orgy once, though? Did I did, yeah. The homeless orgy. I yeah, did get covered, invited to that. Yeah, we covered that. that. <laughs> yeah, we have covered that. I've received an invite to a homeless orgy, but I've never, I didn't attend. That would I probably be the that. jingliest orgy, because <laughs> oh, homeless yeah. people typically have more loose change. And also just, like, nuts and bolts and shit, probably. Just <laughs> random stuff. <laughs> what? Just whatever you find off the ground. The orgy. Yeah, I mean, you figure like homeless people are probably they have to be uh, resourceful. So if you see something that could be useful down the road, you want to pick it up. <laughs> well, <laughs> nuts and bolts. Though. <laughs> I don't know. I was just thinking of shit the clanks, man. You could build a shanty with nuts and bolts if you have enough spare ones around. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's what the newest Banjo Kazooie was about. Yeah. It is nuts and bolts, Banjo Kazooie, nuts and bolts. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to be playing Donkey Kong this weekend. That's a thing. Oh, that's already happen. long, long over by long the time this comes out. long gone for whoever hears this, but yeah, just in the context of when we're doing this. Are you excited? No. <laughs> Not at You're all. You're starting with 44. What's your game plan? I have 44 hours, right? Yeah. yeah. Is that it? Okay, great. Yeah, this, okay. This well, you have, you, you, have the, you reserve the right to add another four hours. Yeah, I'm not going to, let to I'm going to, I'm fine. I'm okay. not going to need it. I'm good. I'm excited. I'll, uh, do you have all your snacks and everything ready? No, I'm going to do that tomorrow. I got to prepare okay. tomorrow. I got to take it seriously. Got to get my blood sausage and my my fried blood. No. And uh, <laughs> what else? What happened Another last time? Box, you knocked it off the table or something? What do you mean? What happened last? Oh, what, uh, what? Why did it not say? I yeah. I realized that the save function didn't work for how I was playing it, so I, oh. I had to turn my computer off until and then I did, and I lost all my progress. What do you mean so for you, how you were playing it? I was playing it on on a computer. Oh. I wasn't like playing it through an N64 because like using an emulator. What are you doing this time? I'm going to use an em- I'm going to use the exact same emulator and I'm just not going to I'm not going to turn my computer off until I beat it. Oh man, what if the power a, goes out? You're a lunatic. If the if the power goes out, that would be a problem. That would be unfortunate. 
Yeah. I would lose he's progress. Gonna, he's going to wiggle out of this. Yeah. How am I going to wiggle out of this? No, he's going to wiggle, no, wiggle out of no, this. Listen to, listen to no, this. Listen to how he's already zero, setting this up. No, it zero can't, I can't be the only one who sees this coming. No, yeah, there's right there no, I don't, it doesn't, I, whatever happens, if I don't beat it, if I don't get the end credits within the time limit, I lose. Doesn't matter. So if your computer, so your power goes out, your computer yeah. turns off, doesn't even have to be your power going out, something, sure. some Windows update, whatever it is. Yeah. Your computer restarts, you lose all your progress. You're fine with that. No, I will accept the loss. A hundred percent. I will why, complain. Why don't you just get an N64? You got time. They're cheap. Well, I don't know how, it seems like a lot of fucking, what do you mean I have time? I already, well, I, I mean, think I already have one. I don't have the game. <laughs> would I be can the send issue. you the game. Well, I, do, yeah, tomorrow? <laughs> what am I going to get? Is that a used game store in Vancouver you could go to? Uh, there's like two in my town, and I don't know if they would have that. You need the expansion pack too. Also, then how would I stream off you of could, my N64? Mm. Uh, HDMI adapter. Mm. So now it would send me a fucking list of things I now need to get. In well, day. we could have got you all this send stuff if you mentioned it uh, three weeks ago when you decided to do this. We could have had it all planned out for you. That's fair. I'm not going to argue that point. That's fair. Oh. I think it'll you, be fine. Oh, I, can you please argue the point? I have to know. Oh, I mean, what would I? I, I mean, I guess, I don't know. Uh, is it assumed who streams off of an N64? I don't feel like that's all that common. I think that's, most people streaming your, N64 your argument, games. Your argument for not telling okay, us sooner you is shut that up, who streams... Eric, Eric be quiet. <laughs> you told me to <laughs> fucking argue a point I didn't want to argue, and then I argue the point because you asked me to, Eric just and then you tell me it's not a good argument. <laughs> I said I wasn't going to argue it. I never came from a position of this was a great argument. It's a ridiculous thing you just did. <laughs> It's madness. It's going quiet. It's not a good argument. How are you doing, Jeff? <laughs> you okay? You not laughing? <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh. <laughs> you got me so bad with your mom, though. Oh, her, dude, you have no idea how much pain you caused me. It was brutal. It was, oh, I just love the oh. idea of the tail on the butt plug coming up and her just snuffing <laughs> the candle out and walking away. Like, there offensive. is no God. <laughs> Blows the candle out. <laughs> That's a bridge too far. <laughs> I thought I was losing my mind <sighs> yesterday. I uh, I got some new headphones, like AirPods sort of things, and um. They're paired to my phone, and I also paired them to my iMac, where I edit stuff. And I was listening to the... I was proofing the next episode of F*** Face that Nick or Dennis sent. And if I pause something with the headphones and then resume it within a short amount of time, it just continues what I was doing. But I guess if I've used my phone too much in between or enough time has passed, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for some reason, it just decides... I've given up on this connection to the phone. I'm now on the Mac. And what it was doing, and this is where I thought I was losing my mind. On my Mac, if you open like the music app, I guess it's the, what iTunes became. I, I've, I never used the app, but what I had on there was a ringtone I just made, uh, which is like a, a little clip from my pinball machine. I just turned, turned it into my ringtone. But to do that, I had to like put it through that music app and all that stuff. And then the next file down was some lines I had Dan record for some slow-mo video where I was having him pretend to be a robot. And um, I guess when I tried to resume my, my phone playback of face, it decided, hey, I'm, I'm controlling the iMac now, and it started playing my ringtone. So I was <laughs> like, oh, I'm getting a call. So I double-tapped the side of the AirPods <laughs> to answer the call. But when no one's actually calling you, it just skips track. So it skipped to the next track, which was Dan going, hey, B. And I was like, uh, hey, B. And because he, was doing like mul because he was doing multiple takes, he just kept saying it in different like, intonations. So he was like, hey, B. And I was like, uh, hey, B. And he was like, hey, B. And I was like, hey, B. <laughs> and I'm just there in my freaking kitchen. Talking to audio files that are playing on my Mac in a different room. It took me, it took me about forty-five seconds to realize I wasn't actually on the phone with Dan. It was like such a weird series of events, and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm like sixty years old. I'm getting this technology's running circles around me." I just was so confused. 
I hate you so much. <laughs> and it's not like I had the app open. I tested it out. It just opens the music app on my Mac. And there's only like a bunch of things. I, I just couldn't believe that that's what was actually happening. That's oh. incredible. What a perfect... Oh. <laughs> I, sh- I wish it's I could amazing. post. I wish I could post my security footage of me just <laughs> staring <laughs> at my kitchen cabinets, like, can, thinking can I'm on the post, phone. Can you post the audio, maybe, of his different <laughs> yeah. takes? And like, that'd be great. I'd love to hear. Yeah. The one side. And, oh, and that man. was like that was after after all that was done. It was like oh. twenty minutes of trying to figure out where the audio was actually coming from because I didn't know amazing. that they were stored in the music app. I was so confused. That I, I got to give up on technology. That is the most amazing. F- yeah, fuck technology. I agree with you. <laughs> Don't, dude. Oh, fucking, I am having a problem with my car play. It's so. Uh, but uh, that's maybe the funniest story I've heard in a year. <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> what? I'm just trying not to laugh anymore, man. My fucking mouth is on fire. Oh. Huh. <sighs> oh. So yeah, the uh, so... the weird sort of me me just trying to live on my own at home. Sort of work, not live alone. I love that it- <laughs> me trying to mind my own business, just trying to like be a person who owns a house. <laughs> How Constantly do you make that over. happen? It it jumps to your ringtone and then to your friend saying hello to you in a way that yeah, because <laughs> who would familiar. have who would have as the last two files that just got added to iTunes their own ringtone followed by their friend saying hello? Like no one has those two files. Oh, oh God, that's amazing. maybe I'll make a little uh, a little. Video video sequence to like replicate it because i could replicate like a it dramatic every time. reenactment oh yeah be amazing. <laughs> do it a, like a black and white <laughs> dramatic <laughs> reenactment <laughs> like it's on, like it's on forensic files i love it <laughs> there we go oh, that was good that's a great so episode. That, i'm gonna miss you guys yeah that's a pretty good episode well hey i have a question uh, is that it are we done recording for a while or are you out of I town now so uh i'm gone for three weeks then i'm back but we've got okay. enough episodes to hold us over that's yeah. all. I did not. I, I didn't. I'll be honest. I didn't anticipate. God damn it! It's fine. I gotta give Henry his it's pill. Dan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey B. Uh, hey B. Uh, I didn't even think we were recording this week. So this no. was a really pleasant. Yeah. No, my flight surprise. got moved. I should be in England right now. Yeah. I'm. Well, thank God it did. It got moved. Uh, yeah. And also condolences. But uh, <laughs> yeah, God, that, this was a this was a as as Kevin would say an absolute corker, whatever the fuck. That means. <laughs> I've never I've never heard Kevin say that. That's what Andrew's mum was talking about the other night. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> hey, if you're a regulation listener or even uh, a comment lever, or maybe you're just on the fence and considering being one or the other, you don't, you're not quite sure where you fit in. Maybe this is the first time you've ever listened to this podcast. Maybe it's the second time. Maybe it's the third. Uh, if it is the third and you haven't subscribed and liked yet, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you. You clearly like it. <laughs> Show us by subscribing and liking. <laughs> Uh, and if it is the first, and now you think, wow, that was a little aggressive, I apologize. That wasn't meant for you. That was meant for the three times people. We, You still have a little bit of time to figure it out. We appreciate you. Uh, see you next week. Hey, guys. Minor League Fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of Face. The guys waited way too long to record, so I'm just going to make some stuff up. Jeff's new bike is full of ants. Gavin smuggled something back from Europe. Andrew stars on the return of Krampus. The boys get in-depth with global economics. The director of the tuxedo is pissed. And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face. <laughs>